What is going on Facebook? Alrighty, so let's uh, get the ball rolling here. And I'm going to do a couple of shares here. Let's share it into. Uh, where else should I share it? Let's just go with that for now. Whoops, as I lose my screens. Alrighty, looks like we might have the main man on here now. So we're going to kick it off. Let me just. Let me, let me get myself more organized a little bit better. Oh, as I just put the chair on my toe. Gotta love live stuff. All right. Jumping on here. We've got the man, Aaron. Let's approve that one. As he's coming on, I'll uh, just do a little bit of an introduction in some moment. Oh, hey! Hi. There's a sexy man. Doing, man. Good, brother. Good. So excellent. I was just What's going. To... Well, well, I figure I'll I'll do a little bit of an intro. Of what my intention is with all of these, seeing as it's in essence the first LWO live chat. So the whole point of this is really just to share your story and get you to. Um, I know there's a lot of wisdom in there, so let's dig some of that out and share it with the viewers and uh let's just see where the 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 conversation takes us i guess really is the whole point of it so um i'll, I'll trust you in that wisdom bit brother <laughs> well look this is what you told me <laughs> <laughs> i sell myself well mate good Here we got on i got a few people on yeah i can see a couple of names Are showing up Jam. To, i'm not seeing any any people all right so it's starting to come through now um oh. now the other thing that i've noticed as well when i had a when i the first time i ever did this sort of facebook live split share thing um my yeah. camera halfway through just completely cut off and froze and went to little question mark so it seemed to do it the second sure. time around we tested it so if for whatever reason it happens to do that while we're doing this Unfortunately, you're just going to have to be looking at a question mark <laughs> and oh. just pretend like I'm enthused. No, I'm joking. I'm sure it will be. It's so attractive for the camera, mate. <laughs> I'm surprised you're not wearing your uh, the old Swanick bloody blue blockers. I, I brought them just in case. So they're, they're just So here. did I. <laughs> 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 so good. It's somewhere prepared earlier. Oh, yeah. All right, well, <laughs> those that are jumping on are probably thinking, what the heck are these hooligans go talking all about? But um, uh, as I said, I really just wanted to get you on here because obviously we met through Man Cave and everything like that, and we've had a lot mm -hmm. of interactions. And um, I know what you're up to in life. I know that the transition that you've been going through from the PT world and now stepping into the men's coaching side of things. So mm -hmm. I just want to get you to share some of your story and just tell uh, those who are watching, you know, some of the background and, uh, we'll dig out a few of the um, the challenges and everything like that, <laughs> Andrea. Beautiful. And, should, and I guess anyone who's watching as well, if you guys uh, let us know that everything's all good, give us a thumbs up, say hello. Any comments or questions as we go, feel free to throw them in. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Well, so, I can see Andrea's so, um, commented on the glasses, so we're obviously coming through loud and clear. Beautiful. They're nice glasses. Blue blockers, they're good. They're good for your uh, sleep. So look into they, those. They are indeed. Um, All right. So, so enough chatting about how, that. Get into it. How far back do you want me to go, man? Because this this whole process for me actually started in high school, um, with uh, suffering from severe depression, chronic depression, and anxiety, um, which which like almost resulted in my early twenties. I uh, uh, very seriously considered suicide a number of times and and luckily I didn't but what sort of there was a period in my life where I was waking up and, and anyone who anyone who has suffered depression knows what this feels like you wake up and you you, you just you just dread waking up like you just hate to wake up in the morning you don't want to wake up. You just want to you look forward to going to sleep and you want to stay asleep as long as you can and when you wake up you're like 
I got to do this. I got to do this living thing. You know, I got to, I got to live now. Um, and it got to a point I was, I was working a job that was in like high stress. I, I was working in child safety, um, which uh, I do not envy anyone who works in that area. Massive respect for those people. Um, I was a smoker. I was, uh, I was actually um, taking over the, over the counter cold and flu medication as a pick me up. I would fake And now it's like the pseudo ephedrine and that sort of stuff. That was like a, I would use that to get me through the day. I would be drinking yeah. energy drink to get me through the day um, and smoking and just alcohol and, and you name it. And there was a bit of a point where I, I made a decision. I was like, either, either I, I have one fucking really good crack. Like I was like, life, life can't be this. Like this can't be life. Surely this isn't life. So I said, either like, I'm going to make a, have a fucking really good crack at, you know, turning things around and like finding joy and happiness in life. And if I can't do that, well, I'll just like, I'll just end it. Like I'll just finally commit suicide. Um, so that was, I was about 20, I think I was about 22 at that, at that age. And that ultimatum sort of led me down the path of self-development. So that, that, it was at that age where I made a commitment that I, like, I, I quit my job. I, in that year, I quit smoking. That same year, I lost 32 kilos um, and I became a PT all, all in that, that year. Um, so and that sort of began the journey. Th into... There's one thing that I just want to jump into there as well is that, that turning point. Now, I, I too have... Um, and I think this, this is something I just want to highlight just a little bit, just talking about the suicidal thoughts and things like that, because I feel mm -hmm. it's a topic that doesn't get spoken about anywhere near enough. Um, mm -hmm. And especially when I speak to people on a one-on-one -on -one basis and let them know that, yeah, I too have those thoughts and, um, mm -hmm. and, and you're not alone in that sort of way. So I just want to just sit here for the moment and just discuss around that suicidal thought process, because I know I've been there as well. And look, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll even admit that there's still times in recent times when uh, things may not be going quite so well in the in the current moment, and I go very dark on myself very quickly. And next mm -hmm. minute, just sort of going to that contemplation of like, well, what's the point of this? Um, yeah. For me, there was a, a really big turning point with a very very dark day where my whole physiology was basically committing the the act of jumping over the railing. Now mm. I knew that sorry, not physiology, my energetic being and that side of things, but I I knew consciously that I wasn't going to do it. And that to me was a really big turning point for myself. So I just want to just highlight for yourself, uh, if you don't mind, just explaining a little bit around like, what was that moment like? Because there's, there, I was remember listening to a story of the guy who jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge and he said, as soon as he jumped off in that split second, he regretted it, but it was too late. Mm -hmm. So there's yes. a lot of, you know, in that split moment where you've got that decision, are you going to do something or you're not going to do something? you know, it really is just a split moment. Mm. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and there, there was, um, there's definitely been some times where I've feared the impulse will overrule, you know, that, that impulse of going too far to take it back will, will overrule. But um, yeah, I, one thing that really has one phrase, this is one of my favorite quotes of all times time because it, it, it has probably saved my life and many others um, in more than one occasion. And it was, it, it's this too shall pass. This mm. too shall pass. And, and during periods, like not so much these days, like these days I'm aware that that's not me. Those thoughts are not me. But back then where, when I identified, I used to identify with my thought as anyone in, in with depression identifies, you know, really heavily identifies with their thinking um, that, save me this too shall pass and it always did it sometimes it took longer than than others but it, the, it always did it and i was always grateful that i didn't take that impulsive decision um so yeah I, does that sort of answer your question brother or, or did you want me to go a little bit differently no, on that? it does it does indeed and it um you know, I just hope that anybody who's watching this that does go through something like that or is going through anything like that that they get a bit of an insight as to um yeah, as you say, just reminding themselves that this too shall pass. And, 
and just to sit mm. with it and look for the things that you're grateful for and that side of things. And of course, you know, if, if that's, I'm just, I'm very much going off on tangent here, but I still feel it's something that's worthwhile to be said that, you oh, know, obviously if there's yes. any, any requ- um, self judgment or anything like that, that's going on, like by all means, reach out to anybody. And if anybody who's watching this, um, you know, isn't comfortable with reaching out to somebody in their personal circle, well, by all means, reach out to either myself or Aaron and, I'm happy to support you through that with no judgment or anything like that. So I just want to yeah. put that in there as well. Absolutely. There's, and, and there's always someone who wants to listen. There always is. So so always reach out. It's it's definitely the best move to make. I think that's just sitting with this for the moment. I know we're, we're with it, but um, I think that was one of the biggest things for my own personal uh, journey in that moment where, I had the belief that nobody around me had the capacity to be able to support what it was that I was going through. Mm -hmm. Now, whether or not that's true or not, I'm not really too sure, but that was the environment that I was in uh, that I had created. Um, Yes. And part of it was also not wanting to lean on friends and family because, uh, or especially family, because I was helping um, family and stuff at the times. And I guess trying Mm -hmm. to put on that brave face for uh, the friends around and things like that, which, um, I know it can be challenging. Be burden, so right? say on again, not, not to be a burden. Yeah. That's, yeah, totally. That's, it's such an interesting thing. Cause I've had a few clients come to me with that and, and mention that they don't want to be a burden for others. And, and I asked them name one time, name one single time when someone has come to you in desperate need of help and you have said to them, no, you're burdening me with this, you know, like mm. when, like, when does that ever happen? You know, that I think friends and family would be incredibly uh, grateful and, and wanting to help in that situation. No matter what's going on in their life, they will want to help. Uh, just, yeah. as, just as you, no matter what's going on in your life, will want to help your friends and family, you know? Yeah, totally. And I know we're just going to we'll jump a little bit here, but, and then we'll come back to filling in the gap. Um, mm you know, all of the personal growth that you've been through now and looking back upon it. And as you said, when you're in that space and the, um, the inability to be able to speak up or because of maybe self judgment of thinking that it was weak to be able to express Mm. or weak to express, Hey, I'm not doing so well right now, or I'm having these sort of thoughts and maybe you don't want to speak about exactly what the thoughts are, but at least implying that, you know, I'm struggling right now versus to where you are now having done a lot of the personal growth and the self um, self growth, what is the viewpoint on if you're struggling in a moment, what is your viewpoint in that now? Mm. Um, for me right, right now, because I, as you said, Brett, I, I wanted to touch on that as well. Like, w- like we, we all still get those suicidal thoughts from time to time. You know, so, some people get them more than others. Uh, yesterday, I remember having a, a five minute spurt of being like i could just fucking end it like all this is fucking way too hard (laughs) let's just end it you know and then yeah for me and right now hey poppy how are you brother good to see you man um for me now i i'm able to separate uh you know myself who i am from my thoughts you know my thoughts aren't me i don't identify with my thoughts my thoughts are just things that come and go willy-nilly and you choose what to listen to or not you can ignore it all. Mm. So that's, that's like the first thing I recognize now. Like when I hear that thought coming from you, you could just end it right now. It's like, just, just watch it sort of float around and then just sort of float away. You know, it's like, that's not me. That's the thought. Um, but then, you know, there are times, right. And I can identify with this a little bit earlier on when you can't let that thought go, you know, you're holding on to, you're grasping that thought and you're just holding onto that thought in which case, in which case asking for help uh, is, is just so important. So that I find that verbalizing, venting, uh, almost like dumping, just dumping what's going on up in here out, lets it go in that sense. And, and then it can float away that way. Um, but the trick is, the, the trick is, and this took me a long time to learn, is understanding that it's not weak and it's not, it's not, um, un, it's, it's not unmanly. It's not, it's not stupid to do that. Um, but that took me a long time to understand. Yeah, absolutely. And mm. just 
partly back there, or as you were talking about, like speaking out, like one thing that I've, uh, I've said to some people is around, like, I, I think one of the biggest issues that people can face when they're wanting to speak out about what's going on is the fear of the other person just completely trying to, um, force their opinions on them and tell them to just, mm. just think happy, just think all of this and all of that side of things. Mm. And that obviously is, is one area where, which really brings people back to not wanting to actually step out and, and express whatever's going on. So anybody who's listening to this one, just trial this. If you, there's somebody that you're going to go and speak to, just ask them or let them know, all I need you to do is listen. I don't need you to, mm. to talk. Because as, as you're saying, you're, just, you're wanting that space to be able to verbalize what's going on. And, and a lot of the time when you verbalize it, well, you're starting to piece it all together yourself as well. And um, definitely coming back to that idea of it's not definitely not weak to weak to speak. It takes a heck of a lot of strength mm -hmm. to actually be vulnerable and say things aren't going too well. So yeah, um, it's courageous. Absolutely. Absolutely. Indeed. And that sort of leads into the work that you're doing today with the starting to move into with the men's work, which I'll mm -hmm. leave that little teaser right there and we'll step back to the, the PT side of things. And yes just explain, I guess, going through that transition for yourself. As in from a PT to men's coaching or into uh, little PT? A bit, little bit further back, yeah, into the PT side of things and just yes. moving through that and uh, some of the awarenesses, I guess, that came out of that. And then we'll look into that transition because I'm sure there's a lot of people that are wanting to transition from something to something completely new as well. Absolutely. Well, PT, that was an interesting change because I, uh, I went to uni, I got a psychology degree, and then I went straight into government work. So to, to go from that into uh, owning your own business, almost being forced into it, like PT, most PTs are subcontractors. I wasn't aware of that when I went for it. It's like, here, you own your business now. It's like, what? what are you, what's all this book, bookkeeping and tax shit, you know? Um, um, but it was, it was amazing for me at that point in my life because for the first time in my life, I was 100% in control of everything. I was responsible for my own well-being. I was responsible for my income. I was responsible for uh, not getting done by the tax man. I was responsible for my hours. You know, I was responsible for my content and my skills and everything. You know, I was responsible for that. And thinking back now, that was actually like – a almost a, a sort of initiation for me into like actually like manhood and adulthood in a sense um, for me personally, uh, because it was really the first time I was in control of the, the future of my life and of my life. Um, but it was, yes, it was rewarding. It was rewarding. It was um, challenging and it wasn't easy. And I'm fucking glad that it happened for sure. Yeah. And I think that's, you highlight something in there, which has been a bit of a thought in my own space around actually stepping into something away from the, the traditional job and everything like that. And being a hundred percent in your own uh, passion and your own, um, I guess, accountability to exactly, as you said, mm -hmm. to your own income, to your own survival and everything like that. So um, what was, there's two questions that are coming to mind. First one being around, and it's just sort of a similar sort of awareness for anybody who's watching that are looking at starting their own business or anything like that. And just having that concern around uh, maybe money, um, you know, maybe being in a space where money is mm -hmm. something that they still haven't quite got a good relationship with. And then, uh, you know, when you, when you are running your own business and that side of things, obviously you've got those thoughts of, you know, how am I going to pay the next bill and that side of things. So how did you, work through all of that while still building such a successful business that you had? Um, for me, and it's interesting, this is uh, before even, so this is well before really knowing about spirituality and the law of abundance, uh, law of um, attraction and abundance and the law of, um, uh, uh, there's another law that I forget. But, <laughs> <laughs> uh, sufficiency. And, um, it was interesting back then, even back then, it was a, it was an awakening of sorts because I knew deep down, and this is a faith. This is a faith that I think all, many entrepreneurs have that there was a faith deep down that, that I knew what I was doing was more than just more than just what I wanted to do. You know, there was, there, there was something behind me 
backing me, the universe, fucking God, you know, whoever it is for you, there was something behind me backing me. And there was this, this unwavering faith that what, what I was stepping into needed to happen. It was, it was just going to happen. And, um, it would work if I went all in on it. And, Ooh. and so I, I had a small pocket of savings, not much. I think it was like two grand or something. So I had Ooh. two grand as a backup. The good thing with PT though, is you don't really need money to start up. Like you don't need money to start up. And there are a few other businesses like that, but most businesses do need money to start up. So it's probably different in those cases, but I just, I just had faith that what I was doing was bigger than me. Um, and, and I had a calling to help others in this area and it was going to work out. It might, it was definitely, man, and I'm not going to lie the first year, I almost bowed out. I, I lost count how many times I almost just bailed um, because it was that difficult financially. Um, and then after that, like, I think the universe is like, are you serious, brother? Are you serious about this? And then after that, things were, were fine and, and, and things flourished. So there was one thing that you mentioned as you were just explaining that as well, that um, about, and I can't think of the exact phrase just in, in its entirety, but basically about going all in and that it was mm. going to work out. So with that awareness around that first year, um, would you say that at the very, very start you did go all in and then at the end of that first year you went, you went maybe, or, or maybe you didn't quite go full in the first year. And then at some point through the year, you were like, okay, it's time to really pull the finger out and just make this happen. Or like, what was that thought going through your head there as well? Um, no, I was definitely, I was definitely all in from the start. Um, but self-doubt arises, you know, self-doubt mm -hmm. arises constantly. And as, as things just happen to work out, um, I made it work. Uh, and, and there was, it, it all came back to that knowing, it came back to that knowing that what I was doing was more than just for me. Like this was, this was some, there was something else driving this, uh, this career change. And it had my back. It had me handled. And it's funny thinking back because I wouldn't, I, 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 I understood this back then, but I couldn't put in, into words like I can today. Yeah. And it was a sort of that, uh, that drive and that passion that wouldn't allow you to sleep as such. Is that kind of how you yeah, would describe it? It, it, it literally, it's interesting because these days, and I might sound a bit, a bit crazy at this point, but you can tell when source is walk, walk, working through you, you can tell mm. when you can tell when the universe is working through you because you're super, you become superhuman ultimately. Like, like, um, you, you make things happen. You move mountains per se, um, with, with effort, but it's not a, the similar, it's not the same effort as turning up to a job that you hate and grinding out eight hours and, and then going home and can't wait to leave. You know, it's a different sort of effort. It's, it's an effort that has some magic to it. I guess it's kind of, as you're saying around like being aligned with something that you're actually passionate about. Um, yeah, just to sort of like bring it, key. bring it down to maybe more of that 3d physical aspect, like being aligned with something yes. that you, and, and we're still going to get into the spiritual space. Cause I'm still going to, we're still going to open that can of worms there as well. Um, it's, it's all, it's all the same thing. Ultimately, man, it's all the same. Absolutely. Thing. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> Now I've just lost track of thought where I was going with that question. There was something there that was. Um... Got to love live chats. <laughs> oh, good, man. Take, take a deep breath. I'll, I'm loving this. This is good. I'm having good fun. Hopefully people are getting value. I'm sure that they are. I've seen a couple of people jump on, jump off and that side of things. So it's, it's good to see, see Paulie. Paulie was here. Emma, Jackson, Cav, John, Ange, Trowell. Beautiful. I think, um, yeah, I'm not too sure where that one was going, but what it was, and, and it was really coming from my, my own perspective, as I said, like jumping all in with uh, the coaching side of things and doing some more of my own side 
own business and having that start stop of like what ifs. And that's what I really just mm. wanted to highlight because I know that you've, you've sustained your business for a good number of years. So you can only do that by um, having that faith and moving forward it and really creating, um, you know, a, the sta- sustainability through it and that side of thing. So it's, yeah. is there, Anything else in that, in that sort of like little bit of wisdom around um, starting something new, the, the monetary aspect um, and anything like that that sort of comes to mind as far as how to have, oh, that, that was the question I was going to have. So ha- throughout all of that, like, did you have a, a regular daily routine to be able to recenter yourself or, uh, and this is obviously I'm gathering maybe pre the spiritual exploration side of things and also maybe during it as well. So um, I don't know how open you were to sort of normal morning routines of like meditation and that Mm -hmm. sort of things. But what was the, was there a key consistent activity that was helping you to continually move through even through times of doubt? Mm, Yes. Yes. Huge, hugely. And it's funny because I haven't really been that spiritual I don't even like that term, but it's a it's a it's a handy label. Um, probably for the last twelve months, really. The funny thing is, though, I meditated more then than I do now. Like I used to meditate during those times of um, the first year of personal training. I meditated probably at least half an hour today. Most days would have been an hour, and um, definitely, definitely had routines. I was much more, uh, much more strict on my morning and evening routines back then as well, um, which really, really helped me ground and focus. It was really interesting because I, back then, I would, I would have laughed at anything spiritual. You know, if you mentioned spirituality to me, I'd be like, take that hippie bullshit out of here. And yet I recall meditating. I recall meditating and feeling energy like the energy of the plants of the grass like i remember feeling that and and like being like this is weird but like (laughs) yeah buddy hippie (laughs) um so that's an interesting thing to note yes there was definitely um practices that i had in play that really helped me ground and center and focus and and be clear on what i wanted to do Mm. yeah because it's um they're obviously a, a very um, key aspect. So I didn't, I honestly didn't expect you to say meditation because I didn't think back then that meditation was even on your radar. Um, yeah. But that, that brings in very nicely, like what is meditation to you? Because I think meditation is another one that's got a lot of um, misconceived ideas around how it's meant to look, what the, the mm. whole intention of it is and all that sort of thing. So, and heck, if you're saying that back then when you're, when you're running your PT business and what was keeping you grounded was meditating for a half an hour or maybe an hour a day, like what, you know, that's, you know, 20 minutes is, is a good time frame to be meditating. You know, even 10 minutes is good, but half an hour to an hour, like why that long as well? Man, for me, it was, it was a period of time where time stood still and mm. thoughts there were no thoughts and it was that time thinking back, this is, this is, this would have been hard for me to explain back then, but recalling the feeling, it was that feeling of just like, like complete oneness with everything, like complete presence. And, and I laugh because me back then would have just like been like, fuck off, man. Like, don't give me that shit. But that's what it was. It was just complete stillness. Um, And which took practice, like that took practice to get to that point. But once you're there, like it probably took a a good month of consistent meditation before you could, before I could sit there for an hour and barely a thought would pass by, like barely a thought would pass by. Um, And then my alarm would go off and I'd like open my eyes and what had seemed like 20 minutes was, was actually an hour. And, um, that level of like calmness and focus, like just like refined focus uh, was amazing to, to experience. And I haven't experienced it much since because I haven't continued that practice much, but for a good year, that was the the norm for me. Yeah, no, that's interesting. And 
So when you were meditating, I know there's obviously a whole heap of different styles, transcendental mantras, uh, you know, mindfulness and all that sort of thing. And I'm sure from my, uh, I was going to say interpretation, but it's not the right word that I'm looking for, but just, um, I'm sure that at some point you were just like, I don't know, I'm just sitting there and just doing something. But do you actually know what style of meditation that you were doing and what sort of like that, that meditation practice kind of looked like as opposed to just sitting there and um, aiming with the intention to be present and all that side of things? Like, did you use body scans? Did you focus on the breath? Because I know, again, this is, there's so many different ways to be able to do it. And I'm sure there'll be mm -hmm. people out there that are curious around different styles of meditation. Like what, what was working for yourself? Yeah, well, I, I, I initially started with just focusing on the breath. Like that was my focus for, for the initial start of meditation. And then I sort of, I'm, I'm sure there's a meditation, like there's a name for this style of meditation, but I sort of came up with my own where I just, I just, I focused on my, on, on each of the senses. Ultimately, I just went through each sense. So I, I just focused completely on, on the auditory and, and hearing everything, every little thing, cars going by, like a, a, a bird squawking in the background, like you just hear it all. And then you'd focus on what you're feeling, your touch. And if my hands were on my legs, I'd be feeling where my hands were. I'd be feeling the seat under my bum. I'd be feeling the wind on my face. And then I'd move on to smell. And, you know, I'd just work through all of the senses and then continuously just do that. Like I'd spend like, a minute on one sense, a minute on the next, and then combine them all. And then back to the start, a minute on auditory, a minute on um, site, you know, that sort of stuff. That was my, that's what I really enjoyed. Mate, that's super unique. I've never heard a meditation style like that, but I, I'm just sort of thinking at times through my meditation, my main focus is the physical. I'm focusing on the body through a body scan and maybe the breath as well, but I'm, I'm not really tuning into the other senses. So I'm definitely going to take that one on in the next, next meditation that I do just to see it because I'm, it was, I'm... It, it was amazing, man. Like I, 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 it's, it's just sparked my interest in getting back into that actually just thinking about that. <laughs> yeah. Cause I, I was there with you as you were just explaining, like going through all the different um, sensories senses and stuff like that. And I think one thing that a lot of people do struggle with, with a meditation is trying to keep their mind focused. And mm. if, if in that moment you're focusing on just what you can hear, you know, that's where your, your focus is. And at least it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's something a little bit more tangible than just trying to focus on your breath. Um, mm -hmm. cause I find it's all well and good, like feeling the nose hairs going up in your nose and that sort of stuff and feeling something physical, but sometimes like focusing on the breath can be very, very challenging. So yeah, yeah. no, that's, that's interesting. That was very interesting. So then I highly recommend it. Oh, mate, I'm, I'm taking that on. I don't know about half an hour, but I'll give, I'll give 10 minutes a crack. <laughs> <laughs> um so i guess and i'm not too sure where it sort of like falls in line with with your journey as far as the the personal development side of things really kicking off was that i'm assuming maybe it was while you were doing the pt business because mm -hmm. business is something that's challenging and it kind of forces you to go and learn some extra personal skills to to be able to deal with and handle and i know at the same time my ex was a pt and you know whilst sure you're there training somebody from a physical perspective there's a lot of the time that that session is really just a mental sort of like coaching type session as opposed to it being just a, a weight session. So mm -hmm. the, in being in that environment, I would imagine that's kind of challenged you to, to go and grow from a personal perspective. So like, where mm -hmm. did that all, where did the personal development journey start? Um, when it came into, when it came into uh, actually coaching people, uh, as a PT, like, as you said, there is an element of coaching involved nonetheless, you know, if you're, if you're a good PT, like you have to take into account, some PTs aren't, won't, won't, don't even give a shit about this, but it, most do. And most will bring a coaching element in. Um, what I found was that a lot of clients were coming to me. A lot of PT clients were coming to me and they were physically attractive people who didn't think they were and like these were fit people or, or lean people. And they came to me hating themselves, like actually hating their body. And it's like, it's like, what, 
the fuck? Like, like what, what's, what's going on here? This is not a physical, this isn't an exercise and nutrition thing. Like this is, they've got their exercise and nutrition handled and yet they're still unhappy. And that actually, there was a period of PT where I quit for about three months and went traveling over to America because I was like this, it was a, a, an evolutionary process for me because I was like, there's something more here. What I'm doing isn't helping all people. What I'm doing is getting them lean and they still fucking need to lose more weight. They still think that they need to lose more weight, even though they've lost a lot. Um, and so I went away for three months and just like, pretty much um, didn't think I would come back to PT. I went over to America and just partied and just um, did some crazy shit and, and spent a whole fucking, all of my savings ultimately. And then, and then came back with a new, this was, I didn't even know coaching was a thing um, when I came back with this idea of bringing in coaching, health and health and wellness coaching into my personal training. And um, little did I know there's, there's coaches everywhere. Um, I thought this was just like a, Oh, this is a cool thing that would definitely help people. Um, which, which yeah, led into a, a, a coaching aspect of my personal training where people could purchase coaching sessions. And instead of focusing just on exercise and, and eating healthily, we focused on, okay, how do you view yourself? Why do you view yourself in this manner? Why do you feel unhappy the way you are, you know, and, and really getting into, um, I guess what, what coaching is and that's getting to the deeper, the deeper reasons for lack of self-worth, for lack of self-love, the deeper reasons for, um, yeah, just, just being unhappy with yourself and why that is and how can we remove that? Mm. So if there's anybody who's, who's watching this that can resonate with where you're uh, expressing this from and like, you know, some of the past um, clients and things that you've had, like, if you mind, like just sharing a little bit more of an insight, like what was there, would, were there any consistent patterns that were showing up that were seeming to be very similar between all clients that were having that view around self-worth and self-love and everything like that and believing that, <laughs> as you say, like they they might be 5% body fat, but still feeling like they're, they're fat and need to lose weight. Like what's the, was there any sort of common patterns? Man, it, it, there are some common patterns, but everyone is very different, mm. but ultimately it, it almost always comes down to self-worth, feeling unworthy, not feeling good enough. And that can be displayed in many different ways. Like some common examples are if one of my clients, one of my, if one of my clients, uh, own, uh, parents left early, right? If one of the, my clients' parents left early, this is a common thing that comes up. Uh, if if they if that they feel like they are not enough because one of their parents sh they perceived it very early on that they they were not lovable as they are mm. because their parents left, and this is a deep deep wound this is a deep deep trauma trauma that we need to dig down into and uproot and and show them that sure that happened but that does not mean that they are unlovable and unworthy you know um another one could be if they experienced um physical trauma or mental trauma as a youth in regards to uh you know i guess bullying or physical abuse in school and never, or, 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 or never perform, never having good enough grades for their parents, or, you know, there's, there's all of these things where people feel they're just not good enough as they are, and they need mm. to keep doing better, chasing this endless void to, to uh, in this case, lose more weight. But it can be, it, it, these patterns show up, you, you can tell that the, if someone needs to lose more weight to be happy, they probably need to earn more money to be happy. They probably need to have more friends to be happy. You know, these are patterns. And this is what actually led me out of just health coaching because I was like, this isn't just a health thing. Like, this is a fucking everything thing. Mm, absolutely. If we, if we can deal with the deeper issue around not being enough, not only will people finally be happy with how they look, but they'll finally be happy 
with uh, what they're earning. They'll finally have gratitude for the the people. That, like th- this is a deeper thing than just losing weight. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And the, the thought that sort of comes to mind is like I, walking through it is a must. And but there's a lot of people who who are trying to want to be able to sidestep it and move around it to actually get the results and things like that. Just from your own experience and knowing, obviously, um, I sort of let on before that you, you're moving away from the PT space and now becoming a, a men's coach and you've got an upcoming men's program, which we'll talk about in a moment. But why just in and around like that, that requirement to walk through it, walk through the pain? Because why I'll mm-hmm. phrase it this way. Why should somebody walk through the pain? In, or instead of just being able to push it aside, like what's your, what's your view there? Uh, because it doesn't go away because you can, mm. you can, you can bypass it. You can step over it. You can ignore it. You can put your head in the sand. You can say it didn't even happen and that it's not real. Um, but it's still there. And it's going to, yeah. it's going to, if, if, if underneath it all, you have this lack of self-worth, everything that you do stems from that, whether you, whether you consciously decided or not. So if you, are losing weight from a place of if I lose enough weight, I'll finally be happy with myself. That's coming from scarcity. That means your core belief is you're not happy with yourself as you are. So if you step over that and lose all the weight, you lose 30 kilos, right? And your goal is 30 kilos. You're going to be happy for maybe a day. Cause I, I can, I, I'm speaking from experience here. Uh, this happened to me. I lost 30, 32 kilos and I got to 10% body fat, which was my goal. And I'm like, I made it. And then a week later, I'm like, I still feel, I still feel shit. Like Mm -hmm. I I need to lose a bit more weight. I think I need to lose a bit more weight, you know? And as much as you try to bypass the deeper issue, you can do it. Like you can do it. You can lose the weight. You're still going to be, it's still there. Like it doesn't disappear. It'd be cool if it did. Right. But it doesn't. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it's, I, I completely agree. You absolutely need to walk through it because otherwise it'll show up in other ways in life and that side of things as well. And, mm. it's, um, and I think what it comes back to, and this is so where we're leading into with the men's coaching for yourself is the fact that, um, and kind of it sort of links together with what we were talking about at the very, very start with, you know, the depressive thoughts and the suicidal thoughts and that side and not feeling uh, like you can come out and speak to anybody about it. Um, mm. Now, I know you personally and I know we've had very deep and meaningful conversations and I know who you are when it comes to being a coach and that ability to be such a big heart and just so warm and welcoming and just so open to be able to be there for somebody to, to express whatever's going on for them and that side of things. And, um, you know, I think what I want to encourage is, is if there's any guys that are watching this and they're looking for a program that's, um, really about self discovery and self exploration and looking for somebody who is, um, able to be with in that capacity um, to support from a non-judgmental perspective and that side to really reach out to yourself. And, um, you know, I, I just want to really highlight that because walking through that pain of whatever it is, and we all believe that, you know, maybe my pain's worse than somebody else's pain or we're all judging it. It doesn't matter. Hard is hard. No matter who we are, it's hard. And that's, there is no, nothing else to it. Um, mm. So leading into that, what is your program around and, and how has the transition from PT to, to men's coach uh, felt and looked like for yourself? Mm. Um, man, it's, it's difficult to explain this, this, uh, the, 12 week, the, the men's coaching because um, it, it really dives into we, – we do get into a bit of health stuff because I believe as a man – uh, health is important. Self-care is important. And, and if you respect yourself, you look after yourself. But we, um, yeah, we delve into a big thing with men. And, and I've got a lot of wounding or have had a lot of wounding in the past around masculinity and not being able to ask for help and chasing women to fill a void and thinking that I'm the man um, for, for getting pussy, you know. And also the flip side of really struggling to express myself as a man and and feel getting pushed over and walked over as a young adult because I didn't really embrace uh, I was I was scared to embrace my masculinity and my my own power 
but really this this program uh, delves into dropping societal masks. Uh, we get to the root of traumas that you've had around self-love, self-hate, uh, women as well, being able to be loved by women and loving yourself and being loved by your parents um, and removing the the shit and allowing, I believe every man underneath has a masculine power that has just being clouded, just being clouded by, oh, it's weak to speak. you got to be a man. Um, fuck, fuck bitches, you know. Um, it's just being clouded under, and the, and the true masculine power and masculine essence is underneath and just needs to shine through. And this whole program is about bringing that forth, dropping the masks, dropping the ego and, and allowing your authentic masculinity to come through. Mm, sounds powerful. Sounds powerful. Now, the other thing that it also sounds as well, like knowing like men can sometimes be, um, stubborn sitting on the fence thinking oh, i don't really need that i like you know i'm good enough as it is like life's not really that bad all of that sort of thing so what um and, and we're not wrapping up just yet so i don't want this question sort of sort of seem like that but um like what would you say to those guys that are that are sitting on the fence and thinking you know that is a weak side of things. Now I know we've obviously expressed about speaking is strength and everything like that, but there's still, um, I feel like there's a message that they're still looking for and a bit more of an, a, a uh, the word challenge is sort of coming up to mind, but it's, you know, I guess males, we tend to be a little bit competitive, but um, mm. what, what else is there that from, you know, those guys sitting on the fence that are thinking, you know, I don't need this sort of thing. Like uh, mm. what else is there that you might be able to share? I would just say the question that I asked myself that led me to, to go, get into coaching was, is this it? Like, is this it? Am I, am I living? Am I truly, is this, is this my life? Like, is this going to be my life forever? Is this like, I know, like when I, when I first sought coaching, I was like, I know there's fucking more to this. I have more to offer. There's, like what, what, how I'm living in the moment, this can't be it. That's, and, and that was, that's all what I asked is, are, are you, do you feel that way about your life? Are you truly happy right now? If you are, fuck yeah. Awesome. If you're not like you do you bro, you know? <laughs> um, and the one thing that I can really, there's Sorry, options yeah. out there. Absolutely. And I can, you know, the, the biggest thing that really sort of came through with there, like, obviously, I was listening to the words that you were saying, but the biggest thing that I really saw was just your underlying passion for this work uh, and, mm. and your underlying desire to really help. And like, I've known that anyway, but like, in just in that moment, that's what really stood through with, with what it is that you're doing and that side of things. And it's, uh, you know, it's so, so powerful to, to see. And um, I do want to take one small step back from, and this should possibly help some of those guys that might be sitting on the fence with like that idea of the change of identity. So that change, because I think that's one of the other things that some guys maybe not wanting to get into these programs because they're too scared to lose themselves because mm. what they know right now is safe. Um, mm. And it's, and it's working, you know, I think, mm. well, it, it's not just a guy thing, but we're talking about a men's program here. So we're talking about the guys, but um, you know, not really wanting to get out of the comfort zone or the fear of being judged or anything like that. And now one of the biggest things that you've done very recently is obviously moving from the PT into the coaching and I guess branding yourself as a men's coach. Now that's that massive change of identity. Like just speak into that a little bit. And um, I guess that fear of the unknown and, and that change and why embracing change is, is actually a good thing. Hmm. Well, for me, it's an easy decision to make because uh, it's 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 very similar to when I stepped into PT. There is a, a, an, a knowing that this is where I'm being called to and this is beyond what I want. And this and, and it's easy for the ego to creep in and be like, oh, but what about money? Uh, you've never done this before. You know, um, what if no one signs up? And it's like, really, for me? The decision is made. 
whatever that like this stuff that comes in is irrelevant like it's irrelevant it's it's literally irrelevant oh yeah i might fail no i might sign up blah 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 but i i'm i'm being called to this and that's all that matters everything else is irrelevant and it's like it's interesting a thought will come in and it's like irrelevant oh what about irrelevant oh, irrelevant you know like th that's sort of how how i view it like it's just chopping that ego down. The ego is trying to hold you back and keep you in what yes. you know. If if what you know is shit, like why would you want to go? Why would you want to stay there? Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, what I'm what I'm just sort of present to at the minute is going back to like if I went to back, back to my old self, and you'll probably agree with me here as well, where you're identifying as all of your thoughts, feelings, and emotions. Mm -hmm. Like, how would you? how would you describe the ego? Like, how would you describe being able to differentiate from your ego or your actual mind mm. thinking, no, I've got to stay where I am. Mm. Is this coming from fear? Mm. Is this, is this thought coming from fear or scarcity? Um, I prefer the term fear because 95% of most people's thoughts are coming from fear. And that is, that is not you, that is your ego. And, yeah. and when you can notice, when you, when you notice, because when things come from abundance, there's a different feeling to it. There's a lightness, there's a surety of it. There's, a, there's an understanding that this is right. When things come from fear, there's like a cowering, there's like a, there's like a worry, there's an anxiety. And, and noticing that difference and being able to select everything that comes from fear and acknowledge that it's not true or it's very, it's very biased, you know, it's very biased into holding you back. Um, you can consciously choose where you like, where you take your thoughts. And that's, it's so empowering, man. Yeah. Like imagine, imagine if you, every choice that you made was from abundance, mm. like imagine how amazing would your life be? Like how many, how many things, how many things that you might not have done, have you done it like because you listen to abundance rather than fear? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's a really elegant way to be able to describe it um, for, for somebody who maybe hasn't been able to start identifying with their thoughts, their feelings, their emotions, their ego, their, their everything that's going on that is not necessarily themselves and being able to really tune into that. Like I think, that, you know, to be describing it as the fear, then associating mm. that with, you know, that's just the ego just trying to keep you, keep you small. And, um, and as you say, it's just around noticing that, noticing that thought, noticing that, that emotion. And, and I know from what you were saying before with your men's program, that's what's starting to strip away, like uh, stripping mm. away the, the disconnection between uh, knowing what is your ego, knowing what is your, your emotions, being able to articulate them, understand them and all that sort of things and really identify as yourself. Mm -hmm. And um, I see Paul, he's got a, uh, a great comment here as well. You know, the other aspect, having a brotherhood that is available 24 seven for you to lean in and be supported. is such a rare and powerful thing to be part of. Mm -hmm. I couldn't agree so more. True. Could not agree more. Mm. So, you know, take the floor. What else is anything else that's showing up for you right now that you want to share? No, I'm feeling good, man. I'm feeling good. I, I actually, one thing's coming up. It, it, it's, it pains me to see so many men not willing to step into self-development. It really pains me to see this. And, and it pains me because I see, I see me in a lot of men. I see me who, the, the me who was like, I don't need that shit. Like, who is this cunt to tell me that I'm a man? It will tell me how to be a man, you know? Like, who does this guy, like, it's interesting because when I dropped, because that's, that's we're taught, as men, we're taught that we need to know it all. We should know it all. Mm. We should be able to fix everything. We need the answers to everything. And if we don't, we're who are we're not a man, you know. And hey, Megan, I love you. And um, <laughs> and I remember dropping that mask for the first time, or I half dropped it and sought some coaching 
And lo and behold, it was health and fitness coaching while I was a PT. Um, that took a massive drop of my ego to do that, to admit, okay, things have got a bit out of hand health-wise and I need help with my own health, even though I'm teaching health and fitness. And one, when I did that, holy shit, like the whole, all of my ego surrounding needing to know shit just like fell away. And I was, it opens up this world where you, instead of becoming that person who knows everything but actually doesn't and is hiding in security, you become mm. that person who is such a humble student and you like learn things for the first time ever, <laughs> you know, actually learn things. And that was really where growth had started for me like the willingness to invest in myself and drop the ego of knowing it all um, and, and embracing not knowing everything and being cool with it. You know, nobody knows yeah. everything. I was listening to, um, oh, I can't remember what I was listening to. It was an audio the other day and it was talking about how somebody they were operating from their ego and had that perspective, perspective that they didn't need a coach. But then the challenge was, well, think of the guys like Kobe Bryant, like uh, Michael Jordan, you know, Tiger Woods, all of these elite players, they have a coach. And then like that challenging aspect being, well, if they're so elite, wouldn't you think that they have worked it out by now? And, you know, kind of look, looking at that counteractive idea of like, I don't need to have a coach because I know it all. But when you, mm. as you say, like you look at the elites, they've got a coach for a reason because they humbly know that they don't know everything. And I think um, one of the biggest things that I've learned through my, one of my personal uh, development journeys that was actually through Landmark, um, you know, that we don't know what we don't know. And mm. that in itself is like all the validation that you require to have a coach because the whole purpose of the coach is really to um, highlight the steps moving forward because they know what's happening 10 steps down the track. Mm -hmm. They know what to expect so they can prepare you for that and make sure that you're aware of it all and that side of things. And at the same time, like picking up on any limiting thoughts or comments or um, uh, thought language patterns and things like that, that, that we all speak on an unconscious level. So, you know, mm -hmm. I completely agree. Everybody is re requires a coach and um, you know, yeah. I don't say that just cause I coach as well, but um, I genuinely believe that we all require a coach. And I think the other aspect is and this is you know 100 percent why i think people should and guys should sign up to your program is because not just having a coach is a good thing but having a coach that's that is more than prepared to tell you straight down the line as to what it is and call you on your bs and i know mm. that you have no problem with doing that because you can see it from a mile away but you do it mm. with such a a loving heart and just a genuine desire to help and you know, I know that the couple of times where you've coached me in a couple of things and I'm just like, oh, why did he say that? Like, like <laughs> there's, there's no wiggle room for me. I can't get out of this one because he's got me square and, you know, center and square just with what it is that is really requiring me to be able to um, deal with in that moment. So you have a innate gift when it comes to coaching. So I'm excited that you've stepped into this space. Mm, appreciate it, Bretto. Thank you, brother. And, and I want to add as well, um, if anyone's looking for one-on-one -on -one coaching, check this guy out <laughs> because, um, Bretto, you're 10 steps ahead all the time. And, and, um, you've coached me in a, in a number of occasions and, and, uh, the, the way you guide people to the answer is powerful. So I just want to flip that on you as well, my man. I appreciate you. And, and, uh. If, if anyone's looking for one-on-one -on -one co one coaching, Bretto's a man. I appreciate that, man. I, I wasn't expecting that. I appreciate it. Thank you. My pleasure. Um, and what I'll get you to do as well in the comments below, um, I know you've got your, your link to your program and that side of things. Throw it in the, in the comments below so that anybody who's uh, – heck, we've been chatting for about an hour on now, so hopefully people are still – tuned in at this point of time but either way they'll be able to um, check out that link in the uh, in the comments below and go and check out your program uh, and Beautiful. be able to get involved with that one that's for sure amazing brother thank you this has been awesome yeah it's been absolutely fantastic um, so I the first of many I love the the technology that we have the ability to be able to do these split screen Facebook lives and 
you know, I appreciate you for being the first on with the, uh, the LWO live chats. So the life with options live chat. So, you know, I appreciate that. And I definitely will get you on and hear more about the program and that side of things as, as time goes on. Beautiful. And we'll, we'll have to flip this next time, brother. You'll have to be in the, in the uh, hot seat and I'll, I'll ask you some questions. I'm more than happy to do so. <laughs> Keen. All right, my man. Thanks a lot. No worries, brother. Much love. And I will speak to you when I do soon. And I appreciate everybody love, for tuning brother. in and uh, appreciate all the support. All right. Cheerio. See ya.